Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike, and I got my line mate Matt with me. And today we're going to go over the Blackhawks' only game they played this week and some NHL news. You know, Matt, before we even get into that, what is going on with the scheduling this this season Dude, with the me, NHL, man? man? It's, I feel like we're watching, like, football. It's like one game a week and yeah. tons of time between. It's like you forget the Hawks are even playing. It's crazy. Yeah, typically, you know, at, at around this time, the NHL is really cooking and the NBA, you know, they're, they're getting going too, you know. And I find like, like the Hawks seem to like, they had like this first two weeks where, you know, they were on almost every other day. And like they, now they're having like a, a game a week. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think uh, the NHL has got to do a better job with this. I, I feel like they go out of the way to reschedule stuff or schedule around other sports. And I think they just need to grow a pair and get like an official day, like a, a hockey day in America type of thing. Like take Friday over. I had a buddy I was talking to before we started recording and he's like, yeah, you know what? The NHL has really, really good talent and they need to expose them, you know, just get these guys on TV in the bars, restaurants, whatever. And there's so much skill and, and they're they're not doing a good job like marketing these guys. Like Canada, right. you know, you got your hockey night in Canada every Saturday. Most of the Canadian teams play and it's like a big deal, like a family thing. You're sitting at the couch and watching the game with your, your friends and family and it's it's never going to be like that here if they don't, you know, start changing things. And I, I think he's right, uh, my buddy Seabass. Uh, I think we got to claim a day and make it like hockey day, like Friday night, Thursday night, anything. Yeah, like any day. Like it doesn't it, matter. It doesn't matter. Sunday's to be, football. You yeah. Know, obviously, yeah. Uh, Sunday's football, you know, but, you know, Friday. You know, even Saturday, man. You know, just put just put hockey. Yeah, that frozen frenzy that was cool as hell. You know, yeah, it was awesome. They, they should make it the it frozen like, frenzy Friday. You know, get all the teams going and yeah, really market the hell out of it. It was like, what's going on here? What's going on here? Oh, they're playing. Oh, they're playing. Oh, are they a good team? You know, like some people, some of my friends were like, hey, man, I was I was knowing there's a ton of hockey on tonight. Are you know, are these teams still good? And um, you know, it, they're they're interested. You know, they're asking me about this when they weren't asking yeah, me before. Sure, same. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, yeah, this, these guys are good. These guys are good. They're like, yeah, I was. I thought baseball was on, but there's a ton of hockey on. It's like, yeah. They're also asking, hey, are the Hawks on tonight? I, I don't see them. I'm like no, they're not on tonight. He's like, what's right. going on? What are they playing in the NFL or something? I'm like, it feels like it for sure. <laughs> yeah, they got two games this week. They um, they well, they played New Jersey on the fifth. They played uh, lost that one four to two, and then they played Tampa on the ninth. Won that one five to three. They're off Friday and Saturday. They play Florida tomorrow, and then they're off another three days, and then they play Tampa again. Uh, on uh, that looks to be Thursday on the 16th and get this then they play Nashville on Saturday and Buffalo on Sunday and then they play again two days later and then they play they play two days later they play Columbus then a day later they play Toronto on the 24th so so that's Black that, Friday that's a big game that game needs to be on on all you know stations and 1 p.m. That's a 1 that's p.m. Awesome. start. I mean, that's Matthews Bedard. That's that's Hollywood oh, wow. right there. The 24th and 26th are both 1 p.m. games. Um, I hope I'm not the working. First one's on NBC <laughs> Sports Channel. Oh, yeah, well, Friday and Sunday. And then they play the Blues on Sunday. It's a good rivalry game. I like that Sunday games against the old uh, St. Louis Blues 1 o'clock games. Kind of brings me back. When we were kids, they'd always used to play like Detroit or, you know, like on Fox Sports or St. Louis and got the glow puck going on. That was, oh, man. Oh, yeah. On you ESPN, got too. <laughs> you got uh, freaking, even Gretzky played with the Blues. This was insane. Mike Keenan was the coach. Yeah. Oh, man. So, um, Matt, what did you think of that Tampa game? I thought that was the Bedard looks a little... You know, like he's getting it, he's comfortable, he's taking more chances, and yeah, he's he kind of took over that game. And I I know he got the uh, the you know the thing that they're passing around after the game, like uh like the chain necklace, like the MVP. 
you know, from the from the guys yeah. and stuff. It was cool. The bling. Yeah, the, the Hawks bling. I think Taylor Hall passed it off to him. It was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, man, he had two goals, two assists that he definitely took over that game. And I give a lot of credit to Morezic. He, I think he had like 30, 32 saves. Or, uh, Tampa's a very good team and he, he pretty much shut they the are. door on those guys. Do you think that Tampa's kind of, uh, headed on their way down? No, I think they're the best goalie in the world's hurt and they're just trying to do what they can. Hedman's quietly having another Norris here. I don't know if you looked at his numbers. He's number two in points behind Quinn Hughes. And Hedman's always been a beast. I think he got a little more rest last year, and it's showing. I know he had a pretty stupid penalty at the end of the game, though. I forgot who he hit. And he got that 10-minute game misconduct for just kind of mouthing off to the rest. But still, he's having a <laughs> he, he's going to have a, a Norris-like year if he keeps this up, though. Man. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of his man. I, I remember uh, coming I wonder, out party, right? I want, I want, yeah, I wonder when when he's going to start um, dropping off. I think Stammer looked good. Stamkos was firing some BBs, and uh, uh, Brandon Hagel, man, he he's a force out there. Him and Braden Point, they're like kind of rem- they look alike. Yeah. They skate like. Yeah, like, they oh, do. Geez. They look exactly. It's kind of like, like Ty- Tyler Johnson throw, uh, and Bedard. I sometimes I'm looking. I'm like. There's because they're smaller guys, and I get confused. I'm yeah. like, geez, Tyler Johnson looks and skates like Bedard. I know Bedard's obviously got the better shot, but they get, kind of skate the same. You know what's his name? Uh, if you throw Riley Stillman on the Tampa Bay team, man, you got three guys that look exactly like. <laughs> yeah, big guys, big boys. No, they just look alike. You know, um, Braden Point, Hagel, and Riley Stillman. Huh. I never noticed that. I know that the. Can you imagine if they got Tyler Johnson back? They were like all those smaller, <laughs> smaller dudes, but fast and real creative. Sure. Yeah, Tampa was a good yeah. team, man. I I think they're they're gonna s- surprise you. And I heard Vasilevsky's ahead of schedule, so maybe he'll come back early and kind of get him back into the playoffs. Just get warmed up for the playoffs. Yeah, they, they had an interview with uh, John Cooper, I think, on uh, Sirius Radio, and he was. He was being really careful how he was talking. He wasn't like saying, "Oh, he's coming back early," but he's like, "Yeah, we're we're very pleased with his uh, progression and stuff." So, hopefully, he comes back soon. Wow. Still think he still think he's Korchinski the best. got dude. his. Korchinski got his first goal in that game. Yeah, that's congrats to him. That was a nice goal. Uh, I think his trial, his ten game trials, he's he's not going back down. He's with the the big club, which is well deserving. I think. I was just yeah, going to mention and that. I, I think it's the right move. I he, I think he's too good to play down there, and he's gonna he's gonna develop. It's gonna take a while. It took Keith and Siebes a while, but uh, eventually it just kind of clicked. And I think he's gonna be right at the, the level of those guys. You know, it's it's really crazy, man, because he's he mentioned that that he's learning, you know, and he makes mistakes, and he's he feels supported by Kyle Richardson, which is huge. You know, because, like, you make one mistake in the NHL, man, and because the talent is so good that they're going to bury it on you. And he's he's mentioning how, you know, he should make some more passes off the boards, um, when to use Simple his skating, yep. when not yep. to use it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll be honest with you, dude, he's, uh, he looks, he looks I, I great like out him. there, man. I just don't like number 55. I just think of freaking Eric Daze. That's the worst part about him. <laughs> But you know yeah. what? Can you imagine if this kid was playing under Coach Q? I I think Q Q oh was very was very impatient with like the younger guys. I I don't think we'd have him long. I think he'd be sent somewhere else and used right, and he'd come back and haunt us. You know, because I think Nick oh, Laddie yeah. was really good, and Q ruined him, in my opinion. I think that Nick Letty still turned into a great NHL player. Yeah, it's just Q liked like the older guys. He he wanted to play the guys he could trust, and which was crazy to me. I think that Letty was light years better than like Michael Rosevall and all those guys. He I was just kind of fill that. in, but he just loved that guy so much. I don't know what it was, but you know, obviously your top four are always going to be, you know, it was Siebes, Keith, and. Jarmelson and you know Oduya was up there. Campbell one year and 
I thought Letty could have played with Jarmel Sano and he would have been fine. You know, I, I yeah, I, I think, think so that too. they they just threw him out and it was way too soon, and that was a terrible move. I can't really blame Bowman because I think Hugh kind of forced him out the way he was scratching him. I think he did. That that was a tough one for me. Yeah, I think um, I think that he would have played well with with Jarmelson if he would have just gotten the opportunity. I mean, the season that he left, dude, he he really blossomed out in for oh, the Islanders. Yeah, he got paid too. I think he. I think they paid him like seven million a year. I mean, I don't. Uh, I thought, or was it? Was it I don't think the Hawks would have been able to afford him at that rate. But yeah, you know, I, they could have locked him up a little sooner and probably would have been cheaper. And I, that man, we had some good defensive guys coming in. Man, and speak of, speaking of that, we're going to see Letty on the 26th Louis. when we play the the Blues and Brandon Saad. Yeah, it's crazy. They all end up in St. Louis, you know? I, I think Saad was... Or Detroit. Yeah. Oh, God. Did you hear the rumor about Kane? So... No. Four teams have been watching him, you know, during his workouts, his skating workouts and stuff. And Detroit's there. Dallas is there. Um, Florida. Panthers are there, too. Interesting. Maybe uh, Matthew Kachuk sent a guy up there. Maybe Matthew Kachuk sent his dad <laughs> yeah. up there to go talk to him. But I also heard Buffalo. Walt, Walt. Buffalo, the the that's like the ideal like Sabers, you know, Buffalo native, get him back and Hall of Famer, get him yeah. back on his hometown team. They're not bad. I don't. He'll definitely help, but I think his best fit for a cup probably will be Dallas, in my opinion. I don't want to see him go to Detroit. Really? That would just suck. Oh, but, no, me neither. You know, DeBrincat's his buddy, Larkin. They're playing well. Throw Cater in, or I don't know if he's going to kill the chemistry or not. But, you know, kind of kind of hoping he's considering the Hawks. But I think the Davidson wants something to do with it. Said, uh, hey, you put no. him out there with Bedard, man. I, oh, I think it would gosh, be magical. Dude. And you're going to please a lot of Hawks fans. You know, like bring him back. Oh, but Dard would you, you sell some season oh, tickets geez. with that too? It's like a fairy tale. It's like uh, picking your your fantasy team on NHL like uh, PlayStation games and stuff. You know, put like the dream team out there. All they have to do is call him. Just say, yeah, hey, "Hey, man, we, we want you back. Come on dude. back, We're sorry, bro. we want you back. We'll we'll give you the C, and uh, Two years. just just pass this kid the puck." Just pass this kid the puck and let him do the rest. Give him two years, five mil. He's, give him a signing bonus. Give him a good signing bonus or something. Yeah. yeah why give him not? a Hawk, give him a, Hawk a Chevy Hawk how, or whatever how many it's millions? called. Hawk Ford. Give him a couple commercials. You're good. Hawk Ford. Give Here's him a couple a commercials. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> One of those awful Hawks painted freaking Camaros. I hated those yeah. things, man. If if I won one of those, I would take it straight to a Chevy sell dealership it. and say, "What are you going to give me?" For <laughs> I'd this? have Kane sign it and try to sell it on like eBay or something. Try to get it extra thirty grand for it. <laughs> I'm going to sell his Camaro. <laughs> hey, Kane, can you sign my Camaro, dude? <laughs> yeah. So Tyler Johnson, man, and Corey Perry, I think, have been making a very big impact for Chicago. Uh, Corey Perry, I think that he's vocal in the locker room. Um, I think that he's a, a good example for for Bedard, and I think that he has he scored a, a few goals. I think that he's been a really great pickup, man. Uh, Tyler Johnson, I think that he's kind of just doing his thing, but um, Nick Foligno, man, I think is somebody that is is really showing these young guys like hey this is how you do it this is how you play uh this is how you know we come into the rink this is how we work you know matt do you think that i i know that it's not as desirable i would have rather have had taves and kane with the organization to show these new guys but i think davidson could have done a lot worse w with um bringing in other players do you think that this is, would you call it a success, bringing in Nick Foligno and Corey Perry as of well, right now? Dude, Foligno's been ripping it up since they kind of shuffle lines a bit. I think he's three assists yeah. last game, and he looks good. And, you know, he's the, the locker room guy, everybody likes to say. And, I mean, oh, I, really? mean I think that's an underrated thing. If you're, a lot of guys are quiet when they're, like Bedard, I'm sure he's real quiet. You know, being the young kid, but you got a guy who's been through everything and 
Felino's been a captain. He's played for a lot of like a lot of different coaches, like Torts and stuff. He he knows, and it, I I think that's a great great signing. I know they overpaid him, but I mean, right now it doesn't matter. We had to we got money to spend, and you gotta get above the cap basement and stuff. So I think Perry was a better. I think he's more of an an effective player than Felino. And I, I think Corey Perry has been probably like the second best forward on the team behind Bedard right now. I, I know he's got eight mm. points, and he's keep in mind he's thirty eight, dude. And he's been playing right. a lot of playoff hockey the last couple seasons. He's been in the final, losing. I think he lost three finals in a row. I want to say with, I think Montreal he lost, and then he went to Dallas and lost yep. to Tampa, and then I think he lost the next year. I forget what team he was on at the time, but. I mean that's a lot of hockey. He he's won a cup. I think his rookie year with the Ducks. What was that? Oh eight or oh seven or something. Yeah, him Gets and him and rookies Getzlaff. and Tamu and you know Jaguar, Briskaloff, all those dudes. Scott Niedermeyer, Pronger. That was a jack team, dude. So this guy's got a lot of experience. He's played with some Hall of Fame guys, and he's bringing it to this team. And I, that's probably been my favorite signing. And you know it, it's crazy to say that because I hated that guy. He played like a dick, but. Yeah, guy you want on your team, man, for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, Nick Foligno and Peter Morazic. Uh, I would probably say, man, the Blackhawks goaltending has you know gone pretty unsung heroes, uh, keeping them in some games that they sh- really shouldn't oh, be in. Sure. Um, it's not as bad as it was. Uh, I will probably say last season, but um, I think that we're competing. I yeah, they're competing. This, yeah, we're definitely competing, and you know what? I, you really can't ask for much more than that. I, I mean, I like what I, I see. I think Mraza keeps this up, dude. Teams are going to be calling him at the deadline about him. Hey, yeah. Like even the Leafs, their goaltending sucks. They're terrible. And this guy's he he played with Toronto. He was traded here from Toronto to, but you know it's the cap space that's killing them. So maybe they can work out yeah. a you know salary retaining here, or whatever. But. He, if he plays this way, he can bring in like a second round pick and maybe a, a decent goalie prospect. Seth Jones has been playing better. It seems like he's getting better game by game. He's a slow starter, though, isn't he? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with Seth. I think, you know, obviously people are going to pay down the contract all they want, but it, it is what it is right now. Just he, he's fine. Right. He's a good leader out there. I do feel like he forces the puck a little too much on the power play. He'll force it to Bedard a little too much and kind of he kind of fumbles the puck a little bit. Like he he's got pressure on him and he's kind of I don't know, maybe he's extra cautious, but he he always ends up kind of pulling it out of the the zone and he's got to regroup and, you know, reset the power play entry and stuff, but and he's he's good. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, man. I um there is someone else I wanted to talk about. Lucas Reichel, man. Lucas Reichel is, um, we need to get this kid going. I don't know what they need to do or, or where they need to put him at, you know, but we need to help. They got to do, they got to put him with 98, dude. They have to. Yeah. There's really, you know, there's really not a lot of talent for him. He needs to play with skilled guys and I think he's deserving of it. He's a, you know, up and coming prospect, but, Bedard needs a guy to play with too, if for the future. You gotta right. start looking into this. Kershev, he's been playing good with him, but I, I I'd like to see like the the top guys play together. And um, this is the time to do it. You know, there's no expectations with the team. Throw it out there, see see how it works. Because I think Reichel's been playing very well. He's skating fast. You know, he's he's kind of exploding yeah, he and getting behind guys, making some good passes and stuff. He's definitely creating more chances than. You know, the beginning of the season, he looked like a ghost out there. And it sucks, you know, you're playing behind the top prospects, like, in the last decade, maybe even longer, you know. And he's kind of in the shadow of Bedard right now. But he's got to step up a little bit, and I think he has been. And I just, I think he's deserving of a chance to play with Connor. And, you know, at this point, try it out. Get him going. You can do everything you can. Yeah. Matt, is there any... uh... Any any unsung heroes on the team? Anybody that you want to mention that has been um, to keep an eye on or something uh, like that? You know, I I don't. I think the the spotlight's on you know Connor and you yeah. know Korczynski's getting a little bit of love, but uh, 
you know what? I was really hoping to see that kid that got hurt at the beginning of the season. Um, Sammy. Colton? Um, Colton Savoy, Sammy Savoy. Yeah, and I heard great things about that guy. Like, he's like a guy you want on your line, a hardworking guy. He'll go down and get the pucks and, you know, do the dirty work for you. And kind of like a, a Dave Boland kind of guy, Adam Burrish. You kind of like a grinder, but you know, I was really excited to see him. And you know, he took that, was that nasty collision, or was it? Uh, I think he maybe blew a flat tire, but he was out for the year. But that that was one guy I was really kind of looking forward to see. But everybody else so far, you know, you got the these older guys like Connor Murphy. I'm kind of getting sick of him. I I had a buddy of mine uh, <laughs> text me. Oh, I'm getting so sick of watching Toy Story take stupid penalties <laughs> I'm like, oh my god i thought i was the only one who called him sid phillips he looks like you know <laughs> even even the main character kid andy he looks he looks like a toy story character or a toy story human <laughs> and, but you know yeah. and you're just getting sick of those guys and he, he, he's another locker room yeah, guy but though. you're in the nhl you you better be a locker room guy you know you made it to the the big stage you gotta but he never done anything you know it's it, at least Felino's established, <laughs> but uh, sure. I, I guess if you had to say an underrated guy right now, unsung dude, I'd give it to Mrazek, dude. I think he's keeping the team into the games, and you know he he he's competing, and we're not really getting blown out. You know, it's it it's not like five nothing right. games losses that the years before I felt like the Hawks lost by five nothing almost every other game. Yeah. So they got a chance to win every night. You know, obviously you're playing against yeah. like Vegas. They they skated with Vegas for two periods. They 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 look good, but Vegas kind of took over and you know kind of blew them out a little bit at the end. And I Tampa's a battle tested team, and the Hawks kind of mopped the floor with them the first two periods. So you know you yeah. get you, once Connor gets going, I think it's gonna be uh, we're gonna be in for a real show, dude. Two point games, yeah, two goal games, <laughs> two point hat, eight games. The kid wants a Hattie bad, you know. He's like, I want to get yeah, all these yeah. milestones out he of the way to... so I could just focus now. He likes to score, man. He likes to score. He likes to shoot the puck. They need to get somebody who could get him I, the puck. I love that. That should be that should be Lucas Reichel. It Reichel. should be because I think Connor, he is a very good passer. I don't know. Dude, the puck off his stick, it's like a second to the guy. It's it's crazy. He's like almost the, the whip in the stick. I don't know, remember I showed you that, that shot. That, oh right, man! He's got such a good shot, good release, and his passing is like the same. Like he very creative passer, very underrated passer. But I want to see this kid shoot. And um, he had a backhand pass uh, against Tampa. It went in between two insane. guys, right on the. Uh, I forgot whose stick it was, but it, it but the the pass was completed. Just I was bring like, Cater in to be the passer. I can't Let Connor that. shoot. I don't care if he right. finishes with that, one assist all season. If you have a hundred goals, that's all that matters. Just keep. Fire in that puck, man. <laughs> just let him just oh, let him dude, score. His shot, I, it's the best shot I've ever seen a Hawk player have. I mean, and Kane is an, another very underrated shooter, but man, this guy, his yeah, shot is elite, was. dude. And 18 years old. Can you imagine when he gets a little stronger? It's it's going to be crazy, dude. We're gonna yeah. Be, he's yeah, getting that's, 60. He's that's going to get 60 crazy. once in his career. He's going to be like the next Matthews. <laughs> That's what's crazy is that he's just like an 18 year old kid. And then, you know, what is he, 18 months and 18 years and like a, like a few months? And wait till he's like yeah, 23. He's bulk up a little bit. You know, his release is already freaking elite. So imagine. And it's going to get even better. It's going to get even stronger. It's, it's going to be good. We just got to get him some line mates and, you know, put a supporting cast around him. And this team's going to be good. Skates really well. Oh, man. He's a, he's a great player. I think he's exactly as advertised. Like, I'm going to say this again, though. The only thing he's got to learn is to manage his shifts a little bit better. He takes long shifts, and he loves oh, skating yeah. into three guys. I know <laughs> you're good, dude. You're good, but it's not going to happen. It's, That's all he's been doing his whole life. Is it's just not going to happen unless the defensemen are two forwards on the power play playing back. Go for it, then. <laughs> but if it's two you know, D-men that play D... For money in the NHL, don't even yeah. try it. Don't even try it. <laughs> oh man! Moving on, 
Yarma Yager is going to have his uh, his number retired, number sixty eight. So for what team? Retired by the Penguins. The, <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, uh, I'm just messing with it. He's played on every NHL team except the Hawks. <laughs> yeah, except the Hawks. That would that would sell, oh. man. A Yager Black Hawks jersey. It would be cool, but uh, I think it, the bad blood ninety one. Did he just freaking guy walked all over the Hawks that season? Yeah. Um. Willie Nylander's got a 15-game point streak with the Leafs. Now, you want to know if he's going to stay or if he's going to go? I think he goes, man. I don't think that they're going to be able to afford Yeah, him. he's going to go. I think uh, they're going to do the stupid thing and hang on to him at the deadline because they need him for the playoffs because he's the only one that shows up in the playoffs, and then you're going to lose him for free in the summer. I, I think, think so. And they don't have a choice unless they can move a Tavares contract. Marner? Uh, you got to keep Marner. He's younger. You got to keep. Obviously, they're going to keep Matthews because I think they locked him up right another four years or something. You yeah, need, yeah. The guy's a sixty, the best shooter since Ovechkin. You got to have him. Marner is his Caner passer, and you got to have him too. The 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 Tavares trade or the Tavares signing is just going to hurt him. I, he's just making too much money. He's a good player, but I mean. Now you're you're hurting these other young guys coming up that are kind of you know the odd man out, and I think Nylander will be the odd man out. So let me ask you this: If you have someone like Marner, who's you know he's a great player, um, I think he's like in some circles, he's like fourth in Selkie voting right now. I don't know when he got into yeah, like the Selkie uh, yeah. conversation. I don't I don't see it. Anyways. Um, yeah. He doesn't show up in the playoffs, man. So at what point do you get someone, hear me out, you get a guy who doesn't score as much as Marner does, but he does produce in the playoffs. What would you rather have? Well, eh, I don't know. I think you got to just hope that it, it it clicks for him, you know. But um, obviously, I like a David Bowen, I in the playoffs, I'm taking bowling all day just because he, he can do it all. Penalty kill, score a goal when you need it, block a shot. He's just uh, that underrated trait, you know, and I Marner is just one dimension, you know, offense. And like I, like you said, the Selkie, really? He's in the same category as like Bergeron and Taves? Markov? Like, when, Barkov? when? <laughs> like, did I miss? What is he have? Yeah. He must have a good plus minus or something, but I, I mean, it up. Bergeron, dude, that the award should be called the Bergeron. That dude was the best two way center in probably ever. And even, you know, Crosby was, I think, considered a Selkie a couple years. Ryan Kessler was a Selkie guy, but Marner, hmm, it, very interesting. Looking it up now. Mitch Marner stats. Let's see here. This season, he's got five goals, 12 assists. He's got 17 points in uh, 15 games. He's a minus one. So um, how are we, how is he in this, you know, this Selkie You know what, man? I, I don't think the awards matter. The, the plus minus stat doesn't matter anymore with these awards because Eric Carlson is considered the best defenseman in the league. You know what? I've on an, on a lot of lists of like the top ten defensemen. He's oh not this on year, there. no God, that team's old and they're they're on their way down and they held on too long. Like it's they did the Blackhawk thing. They held on too long. They didn't rebuild on the fly, and now they're gonna pay for it. And they bring in this guy. He's making thirteen million dollars a year. I think he's got a couple more seasons left. That's just crazy, dude. Just trying yeah. to do anything. Well, he was a plus. He was a plus eighteen last year, and he scored ninety nine points. Mitch, he was yeah, a, that's yeah. good. It's very good. But this year, minus one already, and you're. I don't know. It's, you're you're in a good team. Points on the board. Right. So, I don't think so. I don't think that's Selkie like. No, no, I don't see it either, man. Um. He's a, he is a good player, but I think that I would rather have somebody who who is a proven playoff performer, and he's not one. Yeah, but they're going to hold he on to not. him. I think Willie will be the guy, which is a mistake. I think I think he's uh, 
he could play in the season and he shows up in the playoffs. You know, he, sometimes you'll see a lazy clip of him, you know, kind of like his brother going to the boards and saying, nah, I don't want to, I don't feel like getting hit and he won't go for it. But yeah. he still, you know, he produces though. That's what matters. So I, it's weird. We were always talking about the Leafs and it's like, is this their year? I mean, it has to be. It it has no. to be though. I mean, this. I mean, you got you got your new GM. You got tough. You brought in, you know, Bertuzzi. You brought in Max Domi, Ryan Reeves. You got tough. You got some grit, which you need in the playoffs. But right now, they're not playing well. These new guys, and I, I think, uh, you know, Max Domi was good with the Hawks. I think he could have came back. And, he was. You know, he probably would have been pretty good here. But uh, it, they need him to get going. They need Bertuzzi to get going. He signed that one year deal, and I think he five six million a year, whatever. But he he's got to get going. He's, he's great opportunity for him. He's playing with Austin Matthews, so you, you got to produce if you want a good contract next season. Yeah. You know, kind of ironically, you look at the Oilers, and the Oilers are not in the same situation as as. Toronto because Toronto has more scoring and they're better defensively and they have a better goalie. <laughs> but Edmonton, man, all they have right now is Connor and and um Dry's Idol. Is Dry's Idol he's not scoring he's like he like he has in the past couple years. And McDavid, um a couple I want to say a couple weeks ago, I put in a bet that he would get at least two shots on goal. Dude, I lost that bet, man. He got zero shots on goal one game. Yeah, like the thing is, like, say Bedard, or <laughs> Bedard, say McDavid's not on, Dreisaitl was on. If Dreisaitl wasn't on, right. McDavid was on. So now they're both right. off. And look at the team. They have, <laughs> they're in the basement with the Sharks right now, who just won their first two games, brutal. I think, last week. And right. it's, it's brutal. I think Connor, Connor has a point a game. I think he's got like ten and ten or whatever. He, that's not like him though. Usually it's like twenty five points by now. And uh, yeah, the goaltending obviously is not good. They sent Jack Campbell down, and he cleared waivers. I think he just signed a five year, five million dollar per season. I think, and one season and he's already down. So man, that's that's not good. Uh, Skinner is kind of their guy, but their defense has always been bad because they got so much up front. You know, you got Nuge, Nuge Hopkins, and you got uh, Zach Hyman. Yeah, you got, obviously McDavid and Drysaddle are making big bucks, and then you got on the back end, um, what's his name? Jeez, uh, I forgot. He signed the same deal as uh, Seth Jones. I forget. He's in blanking, but. No, oh, yeah, he hasn't been good at all, and yeah, I mean, he's been pretty I feel like every year. season they're they're running into like the Kings or or I'm sorry, the Kings and the Oilers play, and they end up beating the Oilers, and then they get smoked by the next team, the Oilers, like by Colorado or whatever. But I, they're yeah, and they're not, not going to even close. make the playoffs. I, I think it's too late. The season's lost. If if McDavid's hurt. Make sure he's healthy for next season. Get him. Don't force him back because you're desperate. But you got to look at it. I think they're what two in two and ten or something. So they got to yeah, go on a I, pretty I so. freaking unbelievable run to get back. And I'm telling you right now, the Pacific is Vegas. Vegas is up. I mean that no one's going to catch them. And the Kings are going to probably make it. Vancouver's playing very well, but I think all the teams in the Central the top three and then the, the two, you know, bottom or the, you know, the two teams fighting for the wild card will be out of the central. I don't think any other team in the Pacific is going to make any noise. Yeah, I don't think so either. Well, Hey man, um, Campbell was sent, Campbell was sent down through waivers. You know, can you believe that this guy was once, I want to say at the top of the heat, but he was playing really, really well at one point. And then I thought him going to, he went to Toronto, right? Well, he came right? from Toronto, he went to Edmonton. And the Oilers, yeah, like Edmonton. I said, they just sent him down and he cleared. And it's crazy. I I thought Toronto screwed up 
I thought he was the guy. I mean, he he, he played very well. I thought and, so too. And they they had some good goalie. They had Freddie Anderson and Campbell at one time. And who's hurt let, again? Fred, yeah, he is hurt. They let Freddie go, and they gave Campbell a, a year. And you know he left. He he left. He and now they have uh, Samsonov, Elias Samsonov, I think, and um, he's just. Uh, He's just not. It's the goaltending is terrible. I think it's going to hurt them eventually if they make some noise in the playoffs. Eventually, it's going to come down to the goaltending. So it's it's, it's weird, man. Incredible. Yeah, I, these top teams just can't. You know, they can't get a complete like. Even look at Vegas. They they got lucky with their goalies, but their D's good. Their forwards they can roll four lines and dominate. Like you can't say that with Edmonton, and you can't say that with Toronto even. So. They got to get better depth. Well, hey, man, do you have anything uh, else? Man, no, I'm just uh, hoping the Hawks can beat uh, the Panthers tomorrow. I like, I, I love watching Matthew Kachuk. I think he's an awesome, underrated dude. But, uh, yeah. hey, well, now that McDavid is hurt, who do you think is going to walk away with the scoring title? Not oh, hurt, but man. he's just you know, like you said, he's 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 back to earth. He's like a normal player. Yeah. But right now, Cooch is yeah. he's leading the league, Kucherov, and he's usually top five every season. But uh, yeah, he is. He's the pretty bread steady. man, man. He's making some noise. He's got twenty two points. Willie Nylander, twenty two points. Austin Matthews, nineteen. A lot of Maple Leafs up on the top. Jack Hughes is hurt, which is a shame. He was having a good little. Uh, he was well, running his away. Man. Number three in points, twenty two. Looks like he's going to win the Norris this year. Quinn Hughes. Yeah, I think so. He's also. I, I, I want to point this out. Um, I think that he's only got what one or two goals against while he's been on the ice. So not only is he creating offense, but his defense. He's shutting down other yeah, teams. He's, he's playing the position the right way. And Victor Hedman's behind him with seventeen points. Yeah. So Quinn Hughes is a plus fifteen. So he's playing really wow. well, very well. 14 games played, 22 points. That freaking, that team, they're talking a lot about the Vancouver Canucks on um, XM. And they really like, um, what's his name, Elias Pettersson. He's just, he's come, yeah. he's, they're saying he's a superstar. He's finally, like, he's figured it out. He's playing very well. Actually, he leads the NHL in points as of now, Saturday night with, 25 points plus six. So he's been playing very well. And he's had some good numbers over his career. I mean, his first year was uh, 2019. He had 66 points. The next year, 66 points. And last year, dude, I didn't even know this. 102 points, 39 goals, 63 assists. So this guy is a superstar. And, you know, I'm never going to cheer for Vancouver, just because of the great rivalries we had back in the day, but this kid's very good, and this team's figuring it out right now. Dude, Quinn Hughes, listen to this. 296 games played. He has 262 points. That's insane. (laughs) Wow. He's a defenseman. Orlando, Florida. You see that? (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. The Hughes brothers, man, they're going to be like the Sutters back in the day. Yeah. Or this, or I would probably, wouldn't you say the Stalls kind of took over like that metal? Yeah, dude, the Stalls were freaking good. Jordan, he's a beast. Except for, uh, except for he, Jared. Yeah, he, yeah. He, came, he made it into NHL, but he, yeah, couldn't, he couldn't stay, stay there. there. Eric, Eric's the captain, man. Or I'm sorry, Jordan's the captain of the, the Hurricanes. Yeah. And uh, Mark yeah, Stahl, I believe, is is he with the? Uh, he's with the Panthers. I want to say, I think he, I think he's done with Mm-mm. the Panthers. So we might see him tomorrow night. Yeah, it's interesting. I thought that I know he, him. And, uh, him and, Jor- him and Eric played together in the playoffs last season. They brought Eric in. He's with the Flyers oh, this year, man. dude. He was with the he was, was with the Panthers yeah. last wow, year. He went to go play for Torts. Yeah, uh, Coach Torts. I, I heard they're they're really liking how he's coaching down there in Philly, though. They 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 say he's doing a great job. The the locals in Philly usually Torts gets a lot of hate, but they're saying he's changing the locker room culture, and they 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 really love him so far. 
Yeah, he's playing for the for the Flyers. Yeah, I'm, wow, dude, he's got a 1,105 games played. Yeah, I think all the stalls do. I think they're all over a thousand games played. I th- Jordan's got one cup. I think Eric's got one cup, and I don't yeah. think Mark has any. He had some shots Mark though with have one. um. Last, last year, year and I think New York, he was on that team that made it to the final and lost to the Kings that we should have been in. But uh, he, hold on a second here, I don't remember this. He played for the Red Wings. For oh yeah, two seasons. yeah, we covered him, man. I thought. Yeah. Well, no, oh, no, I remember that he was with them. For, I thought that it was only for yeah, one they liked season. him. They, I was hoping we would kind of make a move and grab him. I, I really yeah. liked him. He, he was tough to play against. I remember. We were in the, their division again. Remember the COVID year? The, the, the Wings yeah. and the Hawks would play. And, he, dude, he was a handful. The Hawks couldn't do anything with him. They just He was so good. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys. I think that he got better as time a went on. A lot of these guys start with the Rangers, I feel like. They, get, they move, and then they're even better. You know, like yeah. Ryan McDonough, <laughs> he had an awesome run with Tampa. I think he's with Nashville now. He was super good. Um, who is the? And then you had Stahl, obviously. Girardi, he went to Tampa, the shot blocking machine, and you know. And then you send yeah. guys to Tampa, like oh, Ryan Callahan. Remember they traded him for St. Louis. You mentioned two, two captain captains, swaps. Ryan Callahan yeah. and wow. And the McDonough. Yeah, oh, you're right. McDonough wow. was captain too. Right after Callahan was captain too, wasn't he? Was. he? He was. He was the captain, and then yeah, they traded him. And then I think the season after he left, they traded for uh, McDonough. That's insane. And then Callahan just missed the Stanley Cup with the um, Lightning. Yeah. I think he, like, didn't he yeah. break his back or something? I never liked him, but, dude, that dude played hard. He played hard. I thought that he, he was, was overrated. It's, he, the, it's yeah. the New York thing, he dude. Was. They, like, they do that with all their players. Yeah. and like. You know, we we've dealt with it. We've been on New York Rangers podcast. They like overhype these young guys, like Capo Caco's the next Mark Messier or whatever. You know, it's like what? Like, do you guys watch hockey outside of New York? Like, do you guys feel like the Rangers just play the <laughs> Rangers or something? But like Lafreniere, he's another guy that they're they're saying he's such a beast. I don't see it, dude. Dude's a I third don't line see band. it at all. I mean, I, I the bread man's good, but you know, he's not a playoff guy. He hasn't proven anything. Yes, uh, Shesterkin's very good goalie, very good. But again, what his did he do? Down. What has he done? You know, he, I think his team lets yeah, him down. One on one versus Vasilevsky. I, sorry, oh yeah, you're not better than him. And if you get into a, like yeah. a debate with guys with goalies, a lot of people think Sorokin in with the Islanders is better than Shesterkin. And they're he's they're good, saying man. he's they're saying like he's not even uh Shisterkin's not even the best goalie in New York. They're saying that's like the big thing. And I mean I've, I I wow. haven't honestly I haven't watched uh Sorokin a lot, but I you know, you look at his numbers, I think he went on an unbelievable run two years ago where he was like I think like ten straight game, ten straight wins or something, but yeah, head to head I I I haven't I wish the Islanders and the Rangers were like dominant because I, that rivalry seems awesome, you know that battle in New yeah. York type of thing. But now it it's like New Jersey yeah. kind of cut both of them off, saying, "Yeah, Snuck we're we're, we're better than both of <laughs> you now." So yeah, yeah. they came but out of nowhere. It, I, that I love a good goaltending duel. It just brings me back to the '99 final of you know Belfour and Hashik going at it, and you know Hashik was the yeah. man. Everybody talked about Hashik and. It's like you guys forget about Eddie. It's fucking guy's on fire right now, and he he always did the he cup. Won. Yeah, so that's why I love Eddie, man. He's just focused, extremely yeah, focused, and really cool to see him win that cup. Well, all right, everybody, that's all that we got for you this week. Catch us on the next one. Uh, what we're gonna do it? We'll try and do it after like a couple more games because, um, I think there's only like. What what two games this week? Get some game action yeah. for the Blackhawks. We could talk about it. We, Do you know what I mean, man? It's we kinda, gotta get we gotta talk to the schedule maker brutal. here because this is this is a joke. <laughs> Maybe he had the NFL teams mixed up with some NHL teams, and he figures once a week. But Jesus, let's get a day going and make it <laughs> Hockey Day in America. 
Yeah, on oh, that frozen, uh, like you know, too, they really need to do like that frozen day, like that frozen, frozen frenzy, day. frenzy Friday. That's what they should do. Get all the teams going, just market the hell out of it. Have a cool panel, you know, bring Messier, Gretzky, Chelios, whatever, PK. Yeah, just make it awesome. Like the TNT panel is awesome. I love it. Uh, I just I think they need to do that like uh like ESPN's got their guys but make it like like a show like Hockey Night in Canada make it Hockey Night in America or something bring in some you right. know bring in some like uh, beat writers and you know just some ex coaches like Bruce Boudreau he's awesome I love listening to him and just make it make it a cool thing like sit down and hang out and have a couple of Labatt Blues and you know watch some hockey. Yes, absolutely. Well, all right, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. This is the Tomahawk. We're out of here.